Today, folks, we're gonna be doing something which we call Victolic. Now, there is a few different types of these out there, but the most common trade name for it would be the Victolic fitting, okay? There is other types as well. They are called something, I think they're called a Sure Joint, all right? Which is another type of here. But it's very important that we know that we can't interchange Sure Joint fittings with Victolic clamps and so on and so forth. Victolic can't go with SureJoint. SureJoint should not go with Victolic. They have to be used in conjunction with each other, okay? So these are becoming a lot more common over the last, I'd say about 20 years doing Victolic. And we do do this in the field quite often. It is very common in fire suppression where we use Victolic a lot and now becoming more common where we're doing it stainless steel, copper for domestic applications, stainless for domestic applications as well. And we can use this all over. It's a really good product. It's very forgiving, okay? All right, again, it relies on pressure to create the seal inside the Victolic joint. And I know when I was in the field and they were like, oh, we have this job and it's spec for Victolic, I was super happy. It's a nice, easy one to do, an easy one to learn. It can be very quick and very useful out in the field again because it is very forgiving, okay? So again, there's a lot of different types that we can use out there, a lot of different fittings and couplings that we could have all based on the application that we are going to be doing out in the field, okay? Where it's quick connect, snap ones, okay? And all the different types. And again, I have done all sizes of this, anywhere from inch and a half, up to 12 inch to 14 inch and all sizes of fittings out there as well. Okay, so again, all different applications that we can use out in the field, all right? Suppression, domestic water, heating, anything. Okay, this is a great, great product and we really like to use these here at Sadis. Sixer 207. Okay, this is a really simple way now I think a couple of the books don't have those, so don't panic if it's not in there. We'll get you set up, okay? All right, but in there you can find the fitting allowances for all the different fittings, okay? You physically have to look at the fitting itself though, all right, and see what it says on there. It says Victolic, number 10, okay, 90. You're gonna find that little picture on here. You're gonna see it at the top of the book. It's gonna say number 10, 90 degree elbow, okay? What you do is you go down the column there and you're gonna find the number 10, 90 degree elbow on the column. It's two inch in diameter and that is gonna give you a center to end measurement. What does it say? 3.25, so that means it is 3.25 inches from the center of the 90 over to here, okay? The same thing goes for the T's. You're gonna have to look at the T, grab a T out of there, num two inch, number 20, T, and we're gonna have to find the fitting allowance inside of the book, okay? At that point, you're gonna take those fitting allowances off of your center to center measurements, all right, and a good little practice is to leave about an eighth of an inch in between the pieces. Okay, so an eighth here, eighth, 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 so on and so forth, which will be have to be taken off your center to center measurements as well. Okay, does that make sense everyone? All right, every gap, about an eighth of an inch, okay? All right, so. Correct. Okay. Yes, would be perfect. Yes, sir. Correct, so good point. So Devin mentioned inside of the modules here, you guys, that we see, it says to treat it like a butt weld. Okay, and our common gap for a butt weld is what? One eighth of an inch, okay? Very good, thank you, Devin. The T, you're gonna have to go find the T's inside. 20, some of them, maybe some of them are different, okay? So before you get your measurements and center to ends, 
All our fittings are inside the room there. Get your fittings together and make sure that the numbers are lined up, okay? We do have some other fittings in there. I think they're called Sherlock or something like that. Don't use them. Use the ones that say Victolic on them, okay? Can we interchange Victolic with other types of fittings? Absolutely not, okay? Victolic fittings with Victolic clamps, okay? Awesome, grab your fittings out of there guys, start getting your measurements. If you have any questions, let me know and we'll help you out, okay? The first thing we're gonna have to do is set up our dies here, okay? And they are very similar to the way we set up the threading ones, except with these we're gonna do a cut groove, okay? And we know the other ones are all labeled one to four and must be in the proper positions, but with the cut groove we only have one that is labeled, and it's labeled number two here, so it must go in the number two slot, okay? Which makes it very easy at this point, all right? That's the only one we have to get set at this point, so come in close again, folks, okay? So we can see, all right, a little closer. This is correct, yeah. This is the one that actually makes the cut itself, okay? They're just there for guide, yes. Okay, so again, up to the line. And the easiest way to do this, again, you guys, is just check it right off the bat. Make sure that this opens up, slide this back, and then don't play with it after that, all right? These ones, there's no specific order that these have to go in. Okay, just as long as the lines are lined up, you should be good to go. And again, might have to make a little adjustment. There we go, opened up, back in. I just find it's easier to do it one at a time than doing four at once. There we go, okay. We're gonna be grooving two inch pipe today, and I think we might do a little bit of inch and a half as well, okay? So again, we're gonna set this up in our threader once we get our die set in, okay? And make sure it's quite snug so that these aren't falling out on you before we set it. Just like the regular threader, it's gonna drop in. We're gonna bring it down to our two inch, right, on here. And this is just like threading, guys. It's not gonna be perfect the first time. Sometimes, but for the most part, no, you are gonna have to adjust, okay, and go from there. Make sure this is quite snug. And if you want, you can give it a little tap just to make sure it's not gonna move too much on you. Okay. Check threader, make sure we got oil. Like all of our steps for pipe, guys, what are our first four? Measure mark, cut, ream. We marked it, we cut it, and we're gonna ream. So, again, we're gonna ream it, and you don't wanna over ream these guys. Really, what we're trying to do is bring the pipe back to its original schedule or thickness, okay? Small ream, good to go. Just like the threader, we're gonna drop this down, pull the handle towards us, are we? No, okay. We have to set it first. Do we remember from class how far the cut groove should be back from the face of the pipe? Five eighths of an inch is what we're looking for. We're looking for five eighths here before this is made, all right? With these, it's very nice though. All we have to do is line cutting grooves here up with the face, okay? So as long as these are lined up with the face here, it will be five eighths back. All right, the machines are set for that, okay? So again, we're gonna start rolling before we start to tighten. So take this and slowly pull the handle in towards us. Check the groove as well. 
painted white, we have these things called thick tape strokes, which make our lives nice and easy. Make sure we get a lesson. Okay. And you can see we have the different diameters of pipe along here. All right, we're, we're doing two inch. Not even close. <laughs> so look for your two inch one. And if you guys want to see from here, here's our two inch and you can see we have these small dashes here with a thicker one in the middle, okay? That here, it's labeled two inch, all right? When you bring it around, come close and have a look, folks, okay? So you can see we have a zero marker here with an arrow, okay? And it should line up with this thicker part right here. We got two inches, there's the dashes and it should line up with there. It's not, okay? So it has to go what? <laughs> Deeper, okay? So just like when we thread pipe, we're going to have to adjust the dies. Okay, if we want it to go deeper, which way are we going? Up, okay? Okay, so you can see this one's pretty open. We're gonna go up a little bit past the two here, just like we've done with the threaders, and really small, fine adjustments at that point, okay? Give it a little tap so it doesn't move on you. Don't ever hit it too hard. Not a sledgehammer tap. Again, yeah, that's right. Bring it in, line it up with the face again, and then just go right over top of it. If it's not deep enough, it's just like the threading, you can go over top of it again, no problem. second time and see how close we get here. That looks a lot better. And there we are. We're getting pretty close, okay? Again, we would have to make another little adjustment, go a little, little bit deeper, all right? What we're aiming for is for it to be on that thicker line beside the two, right here. You gotta play with it, yeah. You gotta check it every once in a while. One more time, see if we can get it. Now once it's set, you know, you pretty much only have to check it every two or three times after that. Well, that's, mind you, you should check your groove every single time. But this, it's a little bit easier than doing with the threading and having the thread fittings on every single time. You just check with your tape and there we go. Okay? So we are in that space now, all right? You guys see that? Do you know where it has to be? You see our zero lines up, two inch here, and we're looking to line up with that thick mark right there, okay? If you haven't seen or you're unsure, come have a look. Okay, see that there, Davey? Yeah, there you go, Justin. There's what we're trying to line it up with. There's our zero, and we're trying to line it up with that one there, okay? This is roll grooving. Um, if you notice, we have a whole bunch of different type of roll groovers here. We're gonna stay away from this one up here on the front. It has a tendency to get pipes stuck in it. I'll show you after we're done here. But kind of, if you can kind of all make your way down to this end because it's super imperative that you kind of get a good look at them. And these are all the same, all the way across. So you can just look at the one in front of you. Sorry, Mike. So you can just get a look at the one in front of you. Go down to the, all the way to the one at the end there, they're all the same, right? So this, this knob here, so you can get a good look at that knob. So 
If you look at... What? Oh, okay. So if you look at these, all right, it gives you a whole bunch of options. I think, um, what do we got here? Sked 20, Sked 40, Sked 20, Sked 5. It has a whole bunch of different options here as far as what type of pipe you can uh, roll groove this, okay? And all this does is kind of compress the pipe and throw a groove inside of it. If you notice it all the way across, we're gonna be doing Sked 40 steel, all right? So if you look at, it says Sked 40 right across the top here. Go all the way down there and take a look at it. This is, if you screw this up, you get the pipe stuck on the machine and then it's a 45 minute process to get it off. So go down and take a look at that one right there or take a look at this one. Sorry, Mike. I'm gonna show you here in a second. So first thing you gotta do is make sure you're on the right setting there. So the right type of pipe. So we're using Sked 40, you see how it says Sked 40 on the top there? Sked 40, right? Sked 40, so we got Sked 40 there. Now if you notice, there's a whole bunch of lines there, right? And I'm an old man, and I forgot my reading glasses today, which is a horrible thing, but that's okay. Because I got some young eyes around me. If you notice, it says two, two and a half, three, three and a half, all the way down. Everybody see that? Yes? Yes? I need yeses coming back. Perfect. It has a whole bunch of numbers there. Coming off those numbers is a line. Now the line, everybody look at me this way. The line looks like this. It has the number two here. It runs a straight line down and over and across. Okay? So it's this kind of funky little angle that drops down. You line this thing up, not to the top line, but to the bottom line. Okay? So all that line is doing is directing to you up to the pipe size. So you look at two, you take that line and you follow it down. Now, the lower you are past that two, the shallower the groove. Better to start out shallow, guys. Right? Because you can always go deeper, but you can't go shallower. Shallower seems like a bad grammar, hey? Doesn't it? Yeah. No. We're going with it today. <laughs> this is a nobody, new nobody has corrected it yet. This is a new okay. Okay. Shallower. All right. And now, if you notice, you have two different nuts here. All right. These things like to get jammed up. Now, does this look like a good thing to use a pipe wrench on? No. It has some nice fine. What is it? Spud wrench? No. Grinder? What do you think I use on something like this? Didn't you guys take tools and materials? What time? Strap wrench. Strap wrench. Thank you very much. So if it does get jammed up, like when I came here this morning it was, use a strap wrench on it. <coughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up that top nut. The top nut, I'm going to line up on the top line or the bottom line? Bottom, bottom line. All right, am I gonna go right up to that line? First try? No, I'm gonna start a little bit lower so that my groove's a little shallower. Cause I can always go deeper, but I can't go shallower. <laughs> All right. So if you notice, I got that top knot a little shallower. And then what I do is I take this second knot Keep my finger on that top nut there so that it doesn't move at all. And I take that second nut there and I just snug it right up. Basically what this second nut does is it holds that top one in place. You don't need to like, go, what was the question? We're gonna show you here in a second, yeah. I'll show you here in a second. Now what this does is, it sets the depth of that roll groove. We have a little hydraulic 
press here that holds this pipe into place. Now, luckily for you, we have nice short pieces of pipe. When you have full lengths of pipe and you start using these machines, these things have a tendency to kick out. All right? So what I do is, just... So if I turn this knob to the left, what'll happen is I'll engage that hydraulic lock. And what I do is, is I... Oh yeah, to the right, sorry. To tighten. So to the right, and what happens is, is it holds that roll groove. into place, so I just snug it up. Now, if you notice, what was your name at, sorry? Justin. Justin asked what that did. Do you see the top of this nut here? Do you see how the, there's that gap between the top of that nut to the top of the, to the top of the machine here? That little tiny gap, that's how deep my roll groove's gonna be. So once I start this roll groove, I can press it down until this nut hits the top of the machine. So obviously if I were to go closer to the two, that gap would have been a little bit bigger, which would have made the groove a little bit deeper. So these are some guides here. You take these guides and lock them into place. It's not super crucial with smaller pieces of pipe but with uh, larger pieces, it definitely is. When you get the larger pieces, what you'll have to do sometimes is kind of angle that, that length, kind of grade it back towards the Victaulic machine. And you'll be like, I got it. And then it'll start to roll groove and then it'll like track. And then all of a sudden you're like, shim trying to shimmy the machine and you know, it can be extremely difficult. Okay. After I've done the roll groove, I can release it here, turn it to the left, and there's my roll groove right there. Whatever you do, guys, do not check the groove. Put your hand down here to check it, okay? That is super dangerous. Pull the pipe out. I had an apprentice one time, he wore gloves. He put his hand down here to check the groove, and the gloves pulled his hand across the roll groove, okay? And it was bye-bye fingers. No gloves, yeah. don't check it on the machine itself. Pull it out, check it. Yeah. You can always put it back in and go deeper. It's doing its, it's, doing its job. Question. Are you gonna feel your Yeah, it's, yeah, it, it bottoms out. Yeah, 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 like, you know, like probably two, two and a half pushes, right? And you can, like, don't, like, don't put any of your body weight into it. Yes, Once sir. that thing touches down, look at it. If it's touched down, touching the housing, don't give it the extra crank. Because that's when we're going to the welding shop to get the grinders, and you're going to leave about an hour trying to get that thing off. Yeah. It's the, and usually what happens is, is when these get stuck, it's because people went too deep. If you go too deep, what happens is, is that if you notice there's a little notch there, when you go to pull this out, you can't get it out, it like locks it onto that notch there. And it is... I don't know, how, you can see see this one right here? See how this one has a whole bunch of cuts in it? <laughs> see how this one has a whole bunch of cuts in it? It's because it's been stuck on there. <laughs> Excuse me. It's been stuck on there so many times. Are we good? Are we gonna check? The yeah, we're gonna check it right now. Yep. Sure, please. Now I'm gonna guess this is probably. So if you notice, we're not even close. 
More shallow sounds even worse than shallower. <laughs> Go deeper a little bit. Little deeper. Yeah. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it up a little closer to that line. I'm gonna lock it in. Yeah. I don't know, I kinda thickness of the line kind Yeah. The more the more you do this, the more you do it, the more you're like you kinda get a feel for it. So you turn it to the right here. Make sure that, you know, like everything in in pipe fitting and plumbing and everything, we always want to make sure that we're square. Alright? So if you like try and do this, you know, you're gonna end up with a bad groove. All right, so you want this thing pushed into the face, right? So the whole thing's touching, so that. And you can see, I just have a barely a little bit more of a gap there than I did before, like less of a gap because it's already all the way down. So you're just going to get that extra little bit more. Yeah. better because it doesn't leave anything on the inside or it restricts the bore of the diameter of the pipe. It is so minimal, remember that from class that we talked about in theory, that it doesn't make a difference at all, okay? It would be almost impossible to tell the difference. Still not deep enough. Still not deep enough. So we gotta go a little bit deeper. Once you set it, you can usually do whole bunch. Set it, it. set it. Well, set it, but at, like if you're out in the field, I, I would set it, but I check every groove. Every time, yeah. I check, like takes two seconds. As opposed to doing all the piping, filling it all full up with water, and a victolic leak usually isn't a pronounced leak, like it's not, boom, blows apart, but it like, it'll slow drip out of that gasket. And when it's, and you're like, you try and tighten it, which does nothing, right? You're like, you'll take them off, re-lube them, try to put them back on, line it up better. Yeah. And it can be tough. because. And you'll mess with it for two hours only to realize that you got to get another piece of pipe. You got to bring, it usually happens way after the Vic machine's been gone, yeah. right? Well, and all that kind of stuff. It's hard to tell if it's like one of the normal leaks just as it's going or yeah. you have to wait long. Yeah, yeah. It can be a nightmare. But it's funny because it will leak as you fill it. Yeah. Even if it's a perfect joint, right? The yeah. pressure is what's going to make that seal, right? Yeah, once it's all pressurized, yeah. It shouldn't leak. Yeah. You know? So it can throw you off a bit. Yeah. It is quite forgiving. Yeah. Just don't go too Fittings much. are expensive. Super expensive. But it's fast. Just like press fit and all that kind of stuff, you know? Exactly, exactly. Okay, any questions? Good? Good? Awesome. Show you guys how to do, and it's no different if we use it on a 90 degree or we use it on anything else, okay? Which are the what? What? Bruce de Vood of Plain Lock? Correct, okay? Now these are the ones that require absolutely no grooves at all. And surprisingly enough, they work. Okay? You wouldn't think they would. Right? But they definitely work very well. Now you don't see them super often out in the field. I don't think I've ever installed one of these in the field myself, but I'm sure you some of you might gonna be in all different applications. Real rig, chances are you're putting this stuff together. Okay. Very, very fast, setting up, tear it down, setting up, tear it down. So you're going to see a lot of it calling in that sort of application. Mostly running the, the, the water tank, right? So it's really the water, and also the mud, mud tank. Okay, perfect. 
So, Vic Lube, folks, okay? Now they say you can lube the gasket, you can lube the pipe, you can lube the outside of the fitting, so on and so forth. All right, if you're ever unsure, just lube the whole thing, okay? Then you know you're gonna be good, all right? And that's what I do, I'm like, I'm just gonna lube it all up, so I put a little bit on the pipe where I'm going to go, okay? In here, and it'll go crazy, right? Now that I have it, I put a little drop on the inside of the clamp here, and I get the clamp set up right on it. Now these ones are gonna be a little tougher to join, okay? But I put it all the way on. All right, slide it down right to the base itself. That way, when I put the other piece of pipe on, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, there we go. Okay, place this up there. Grab my other piece here. Again, a little bit of lube on there. All right, you're good to go. Someone come on over, give me a hand. I want you to hold that in there, hold it. Put some pressure on it. And again, it's always better with two people. It'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, and we're gonna try and find that halfway point between the two. Now, it'll be very easy when you have the fittings to know where it's supposed to go, okay? Because the clamp should come up to the end of this here, all right? Okay. Next thing we're gonna do, clamp down, and it should fit in there quite snug, all right? Now, the best thing to do with this, you guys, would be to measure the width of this, make a mark on this side of the pipe, make a mark on this side of the pipe, then you know you've got it centered. Now with these as well, you can see we have one side that comes up, one side that comes down. Make sure they're on the right side so they lock into place. Okay, right on here. Another knot on the other side. Right, and you're gonna tighten them up evenly on both sides. Do not, you can hold that in there for me there, please. Crank one side and then go to the other. It'll be a nightmare to tighten after that, all right? So get this one tight. So that is pretty much out where the other one is and then you can go a little bit back and forth with each one after that point, okay? Snug here, snug here, and again. Snug as well, and you can see how solid that is. <clears throat> it's not going anywhere, all right? That's the first one, okay? Next. Okay. We're gonna do quick connect, which are really nice as well. You don't have to take the clamp apart with the quick connect, okay? Make your life nice and easy. And it's very easy to tell which one is a quick connect because it has a gasket. Oh, this one doesn't have a nut here. Let's get another one here. These directly over the pipe without taking the clamp apart, right? This one actually has a gasket that fits between the two pieces of pipe, all right? So with these, very nice and easy. Just loosen them up a bit. Huh? This one's a little oval, it'll fit. Huh? Clamp goes on, butt it up to the other side so that the gasket's on the wall. Slide the other piece of pipe up to it. Tighten it, okay? Simple, all right? Absolutely. Now, with these gaskets, they've been lubed for about two years, okay? So they are quite lubricated, absolutely, but definitely use the Vic Lube in there for sure, okay? Again, it's gonna act as a lubricant. It's also gonna keep that gasket on the inside from drying out too quickly as well, okay? And pinch it. And pinch it, which is the quick connects, not a huge problem, but I'll talk about that when I do this one here, okay? So this is just your standard Victola clamp here. And these are Vic wrenches if you guys didn't know. All right, they're meant specifically for Victolic. These ones here, when the rep shows up at your site to drop off all the fittings, ask them for a few wrenches and they'll usually give you some. Okay, I'm gonna charge you up. 
too often. And a hoodie. Yeah, give me a hoodie as well. Give me whatever you got, guys. Don't forget that Big Pollock is the company name. Itself. Okay. Next, again, lube. I always lube the outside here. You don't have to worry about lubing it on the inside. And then what I mo Darcy was talking about, he says there's a pinch point on here. That's right here on the inside of the clamp. If it's gonna pinch anywhere, that's where it's gonna pinch, all right? So I always put a little bit of lubricant in there and then on the other side as well, okay? That kind of stops you from having to lube the outside of the gasket itself, all right? Again, easiest way to put these on is to slide this on the entire way first. Okay. Your piece of pipe. Lube up again, the outside of the, if you don't lube the outside portion of this pipe, sliding this gasket over is gonna be a total pain, okay? So you really wanna lube this on the outside as well. And again, it's always better with two people, but it can be done with one, right? You're not always gonna have someone to work with out there in the field, so I just take it, push it up against here, and slide it over so that the gasket is halfway on one pipe and halfway on the other, okay? All right. You see, you want to grab that for me, partner? Thank you. Okay. So you can see how it's halfway, okay? Split right between the two. All right. Next thing, this clamp can go on. Again, you don't have to take the clamp nuts fully off. You can just take one off and have the other one loose. And you can see it slides in and fits between the two grooves perfectly. So you never have to guess how far should the pipe be away, so on and so forth. These will line up. If your groove is set to the proper depth and the proper distance back, which is what? How far back? Five eighths, okay? Then you should be good to go. Okay. We'll take this now. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's why lubrication is key, okay? Very, very important. And again, if you're unsure. Snug. A little bit snug here as well. And then evenly all the way. All right. Okay. Now this is just a piece that came out of the back there. All right. But you will notice with these a lot of time, you will still have, even if the it's vicked perfectly and the groove is perfect depth, you can have some movement in here. Once you fill it full of water, you got it, right? That's where that pressure comes. We know the seal is formed from pressure, okay? And a lot of times you're in the field, you'll run 100 feet of pipe and it will be like this, and then this piece will be kinked over, and this piece will be kinked over. As soon as you fill this up with water, it will pressurize and everything will straighten out perfectly as you go, all right? Again, really nice and very forgiving, guys, okay? So those are pretty much the three styles of clamps that we have, all right? We do have another style in there as well where the handle just comes over and locks. We're not using those, okay? I want you to use these styles here. All right, quick connect, standard Vic clamps, number 77, 75s, and these roustabouts here as well, okay? Any questions? All right. Make sure when you are putting the clamps on that all the bolts are in the same direction, okay? I don't want this clamp like this, this one like that, the next one twisted over here or anything else. They should all go in the same direction, okay? So it looks nice, it's nice and presentable to the eye, okay? Sound good?
Just a blue. 